Today we're going to continue our journey through the cell. Remember we've moved through our cell membrane in, into the cytoplasm. We're going to stay in the cytoplasm for a little bit and talk about cellular respiration. It's been mentioned before as a life process, but we need a real strict definition for it now. Cellular respiration is defined as chemical energy stored in organic molecules. Typically we're going to talk about storing that energy in glucose, C6 H12O6. Remember organic has carbon and hydrogen. And then that energy is transferred into a usable energy called ATP. Our body can't use glucose in the form that it's in. It's almost kind of like getting a check from your employer. When you get the check, you can't just take it to the store and spend it. You need to convert it into a usable energy that other businesses would recognize, like cash. All living things carry out respiration every single living organism will carry out respiration because they all need to get their energy from their food. Even autotrophs have to convert the glucose they make during photosynthesis into a usable form of energy. The chemical reactions require ATP in a living organism and cannot use that glucose directly, so they have to convert it. So let's take a little bit of a look at what the two types of cellular respiration are. Now, there are really two main types, but they end up getting broken down. So we're just gonna get generic at first. Anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Many of you have probably heard the term aerobic before with respect to something like aerobics way back from the 1980s. We'll get into details and see how that relates later on. Both types of cellular respiration begin with a process called glycolysis. So we're gonna discuss glycolysis first, and then we're gonna tie everything together. So glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. Remember we said that we have a lot of enzymes in the cytoplasm and a lot of chemical reactions happen there. During glycolysis, glucose is spit, split into two three carbon molecules called pyruvic acid. This process uses two ATP. It kinda has to get a little bit of a jump start. So we have to use two ATP before we can get some of our energy. In the end though, we produce a total of four ATP. So if we made four ATP and we had to use two ATP, what is the net gain of ATP? Well, it's two. I used two, I made four. So I'm going to gain a total of two ATP. Now, it's not a whole lot, but it's enough for even the simplest organism to get a little bit of energy to do their life processes for everyday activities. Let's take a look at what actually happens during the process of glycolysis. So during the process of glycolysis, which starts off all of anaerobic and aerobic respiration, we have glucose, which if you remember, glucose has six carbon atoms in it. Those six carbon atoms are going to get broken into two three carbon compounds. And in order to do that, remember we had to use two ATP. So we're gonna be taking off the last phosphorus off of ATP and turning it into ADP. It then can be recycled back to ATP later on. So we've used two ATP here. Once it's converted into this initial or intermediate three carbon compound, we rearrange the bonds a little bit more in order to make our two pyruvic acid molecules. Still three carbons, we've just done some rearranging. Along the way, as we rearrange to get that pyruvic acid made, we're gonna transfer two hydrogens to our hydrogen carrier, or electron carrier, called NAD plus to form NADH. That's going to be used later on if the organism carries out aerobic respiration in something called the electron transport chain. Along the way, as we're doing the converting to pyruvic acid, we're going to make four ATP. So we used two ATP, we make four ATP. Keep in mind that there's no oxygen needed at all during these steps. And this is a pretty fast reaction. So especially for sim simple organisms, this is a great reaction in order to get some quick energy. It's not a lot of energy, but it is a little bit of energy. And the nice thing is, is oxygen doesn't need to be present. So any kind of organism can carry this out. Once we get our pyruvic acid, it's gonna move on from glycolysis and used in the next steps. 
Depending on the type of organism it is, it may continue with anaerobic respiration or it may move into the mitochondria for aerobic respiration. But regardless of what kind of organism you are, you always start with glycolysis. This is the first step of cellular respiration.